We're going to be thinking about this one. It, it's tough, but the, our DNA and who we are and, and you know, the character that, that we have on this team, I wouldn't bet against us, you know, being back on the stage, you know, next year and, and, and going forward. So really proud of the way that we uh, fought to the end. And this five-year run's been, been awesome, but definitely don't think it's over. The Raptors just won the NBA championship. And now we are about to go into possibly the biggest free agency in NBA history. But with injuries to Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson, where do the Warriors go from here? And is their dynasty finally over? What is up dudes, to that ballers, players? It's your boy MJ. The Raptors just won the championship. Wow. The events of yesterday haven't really sunk in for me yet. I want to congratulate the players, the organization, the fans, and all of Canada because no matter what happened, at the end of the day, you're champions. And Kawhi, you're just a dog, man. I'm a fun guy. Every move, all the hard work, all the players, everyone in the NBA is working for the championship and that Larry O'Brien. All the videos I make are different takes and breakdowns, but it's ultimately with the goal to see if a team or player is good enough to win the championship. And yesterday we found out that all those moves led to the Raptors being the champs. Just like I'm really happy for Toronto, I'm also really sad for the Warriors because of all that happened to them. Usually Usually I don't make these where does this team or player go from here video but with Klay Thompson's torn ACL being added on to Kevin Durant's ruptured Achilles, the dynasty that stood at top for years is crumbling and what happens now could change a large part of the next decade. Yes, Klay and Durant were going to be free agents regardless of what happened but these major injuries have changed what was just a simple question on whether they will stay or leave the Warriors. So let's talk about it and to the 90% that watch my videos that still aren't subscribed you know what man at this point just forget it forget it so many people were wishing for the end of the Warriors dynasty but I don't think anyone wanted it to happen like this the Warriors are apparently planning on offering Katie and Clay max contracts but those are just rumors we need to see all the options the Warriors have so first let's review the payroll and salary caps Curry is already signed to a Supermax and will make 40 million dollars next year. Draymond's next year is also his last on his contract which is for 18 million dollars. Iguodala's next year is also his last on his contract for 17 million dollars. So apart from just KD and Clay, two other pieces in the death lineup are also in question. They might not be the most prolific scorers in the death lineup but they are the defensive anchors and do everything for the team. Sean Livingston is also getting paid 7 million dollars next year which is his last on his contract the only other players who are signed for next season are jacob evans damian jones and alfonso mckinney they have about 90 million dollars committing contracts for next year out of the 114 million dollar salary cap durant has a player option for 31.5 million for the 2019 2020 season he could also sign a new contract a super max by the warriors which would be a five-year 220 million dollar deal or he could sign a deal elsewhere which would be a four-year 164 million dollar deal if he signs that super match with the warriors kd would be getting paid 38 million dollars next season clay thompson is also eligible for a max contract with bird rights which is what he wants so he would either sign a five-year 190 million dollar contract with the warriors or a four-year 164 million dollar deal elsewhere meaning clay would get paid 32 million dollars with the warriors next season also, <laughs> the Warriors were still paying Nick Young $6 million this year, like part of a cap hold? Swaggy P! Ooh. The best case scenarios before these injuries was to re-sign Clay and KD. They would be going deep in their pockets over the salary cap using bird rights and paying a lot of luxury taxes, but they would definitely be a championship team that would be the favorites if healthy. This might be a hot take, but I think that these injuries actually increase the likelihood of Kevin Durant choosing to stay, which I'll explain more later on, but let's first talk about the injuries. Clay tore his ACL, meaning he's out to February at the earliest. Props to Clay though man, he was trying to return back to the game with an ACL tear. That's... wow. 
KD is out for the entire season next year. If you sign both of these guys to max contracts, that's $70 million of your cap gone in players that are out for most of the season. And you damn well know that you can't sign any good role players with the cap being $114 million. But why would that be an issue, right? I mean, you still got KD and Clay for years to come with Steph all in their primes. Well, keep in mind that Steph Curry is 30 years old and in his prime. Not not only are you throwing away next season in mediocrity with Curry, Green, and Iguodala, there's really no certainty of the future. There's no guarantee that Clay and KD come back the same players they once were. There are a handful of players who come back strong from an ACL tear, and because Clay never relied on athleticism, I believe he will be close to what he was. But his lateral movements might be hindered, which might not make him the same defensively or the same player off ball movement wise. KD is trying to come back from an Achilles injury at the age of 30 that only one star in NBA history has come back to be the same player, and that's Dominique Wilkins. Every other player who has had an Achilles injury has returned a shell of themselves, like Kobe or a guy like Elton Brand who averaged 20 points and 10 rebounds for 9 seasons and then was never able to average over 15 and 8 for a season after the injury. Am I saying that's confirmed that KD and Clay will not be the same players they once were? No, but the reason why the Warriors were always the overwhelming favorites was because they had assembled these players in their primes and the way they were able to get these players assembled was really through the NBA draft and injuries to Curry which made him sign a 4 year $44 million contract and then they had the cap space to add Kevin Durant. It's rare to have players in their primes that are this good all together and like so many players have said there is a small window for a group of guys to go for a championship. The next season would also be a way for Green's prime and Iguodala is already 35. We also have to keep in mind that injuries like those lead to reoccurring injuries which means that Clay and KD might be injury risks for years in the future. So what the heck do the Warriors even do? Well a lot of it depends on timing. For one, I think that this injury actually increases the likelihood of Kevin Durant staying. The Warriors lost the finals this year which was highlighted by a team just not being the Warriors we have seen for the past two years without KD. Could the Warriors have won a championship without KD but with the healthy Clay? Maybe, but that's a what if. Bottom line, KD wanted to have his rings mean something in the public eye and now if he stays and wins with the Warriors, they're gonna mean something because the narrative is that they couldn't win without him. Kevin Durant also called Clay Thompson to let him know that they have unfinished business. Whether that's a reference for KD just saying that both of them have to get back on the court healthy or that that means that both of them have to come together on the Warriors back back to your championships and win the whole thing, no one exactly knows what it's in reference to. But if it's the latter and KD is talking about Clay and KD going back to the Warriors for unfinished business, you have your answer that he's staying. On top of that, he's returning from an Achilles tear which is no joke and so the Warriors would be a great team to return back to with that type of injury. He will have guys back and have security that no matter what happens to him in the future, he's set. These types of injuries can push an athlete to worry even even more about their financial security. KD took a pay cut to allow the Warriors to keep Boogie so keep that in mind because now he wants to bag. Even with these injury risks, the Warriors will without a doubt try to re-sign Klay to a max. It's really hard to picture the Warriors without Klay Thompson and Steph Curry being side by side. That means that their salary cap would be taken up by Curry, Klay, Draymond, and Iguodala unless they know that KD is not opting in or re-signing in which case they can go after free agents and then sign Clay over the salary cap using his bird rights. They would have approximately $23 million in cap space to play around with which can get them one or two good role players in that mix. That is unless they want to sign Boogie but more on him in a bit. This would also mean that next year Dream on Green who's looking for a max would also get signed to a max contract and the Warriors would have effectively committed their roster to any free agents they signed this offseason. Curry, Clay, and green for the next couple of years in their primes. Now, is that enough to win a championship? Well, it depends a lot on those free agents they sign, especially if they can get a rebounding big and a knockdown shooter alongside Curry, Clay, and Green. But even with just Curry, Clay, and Green, they would be a strong team in the West. None of the scenario I just talked about happens if KD opts in. If KD opts into his player option and decides to take his chances with free agency next year and rehab this year with the Warriors, 
then the Warriors effectively have no other moves to make. They would be locked in with Curry, Clay, and Green with no space for more role players besides veteran minimums and one mid-level exception, meaning a few $2 million contracts and one $5.5 million contract, which is what they had this year. That's because with this player option, KD would take up $31.5 million in their cash space, and so they would not have any other money to sign other players. And we all saw what happens when you don't have KD and you don't have good bench depth. This was a lineup that was played in game six of the NBA Finals. Just what? <laughs> Like I have said, signing KD meant that they couldn't have bench depth. Every team would do that 10 out of 10 times, but without KD actually playing, it was clear that their bench depth actually hurt the Warriors big time. The 2015-26 Warriors had bird rights on almost all their bench players and also didn't have a Curry Supermax alongside a Clay Max and maybe even a future Draymond Green Max to worry about. Now, there are two situations that come out of this that make the Warriors just unfair again assuming that KD comes back even 75% of who he was. If KD opts in and elects to re-sign with the Warriors next year for the Supermax, the Warriors who can see how he's doing in rehab can make the call with a Durant who would be 31 at the time and be 36 years old at the end of the contract, they can make the call on whether he's worth that Supermax. If he is, then the Warriors could keep Curry, Clay, Green, and KD because they would have bird rights on KD and Green meaning that they could both sign over the cap. This would create an insane amount of luxury tax. I believe it would be somewhere along the lines of over a hundred million dollars. But hey, you get these four staying together. Are you stupid or something? The other situation is that KD decides to sign the Supermax right now. Now, if you think KD isn't worth the max and he decides to go elsewhere, you sign maybe one role player for 10 to 12 million dollars and you have KD. These options are what the Warriors can do, assuming that Iguodala will re-sign for the veterans minimum after next season and that DeMarcus Cousin decides to go elsewhere or sign for another low mid-level exception with the Warriors. Warriors, which right now might be his only options. Boogie hasn't proved too much after coming back. He got injured in the first round of the playoffs. He gave valuable minutes to the Warriors, but you could see that he definitely wasn't the Boogie of the old. And if he wants to play and if he wants to sign for a higher deal than what he would get right now, he would need to play more and prove that he's Boogie. So the dynasty isn't close to being over, which is crazy to say about a team that has made five straight finals and is coming off of major injuries. Those two injuries, apart from maybe a hip injury, are the worst two injuries in basketball. But somehow, the Warriors might be in even better position to keep these four together. Yes, the next season might not be great for the Warriors, especially if they do re-sign KD and Clay. But if KD stays healthy after coming back and is close to how he once was, the Warriors will again be the favorites. You know, unless some other team just gets a whole new new super team. <clears throat> Lakers, you are committing to those four till they get old, which at that point, it would be time to rebuild, but it's a gamble. The gamble is KD's health, but even then, your worst case scenario is that you're stuck with Curry, Clay, and Green all in their primes, which to me is not that bad. But what do you think? Will KD resign? Will the Warriors get back to the finals within the next two years? I also want to talk about how the NBA Finals changed the course of this free agency and maybe even the beginning of the next decade of basketball. That might be coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Drop a like for KD and Clay because they are some true Warriors, man. And also for the Raptors because they did it. Also, the watch party on Twitch was a really fun time, so thank you for all those that came. And if you're still watching this video right now, comment Game 6 Clay. So, I know. The Instagram shout of the day goes to Bricks, and the all day notification watch shout goes to SB Boy. Thanks for the all day support. Make sure to bell for all day notifications, and if you're not a sub, hit that subscribe button, join the all day community for more fire content, all day support. It's your boy MJ. We out.